Alright, what's up everybody? Um, welcome back to Wisdom Wednesdays. Um, so today we're gonna do something a little different. I got my brothers with me today. And um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about some challenges that we face being black Christian men in our field or in our profession. My brother Moses is 34. Good job. 34, you got five kids and he's a coach with the Indiana Pacers. My brother Dan's 30, single. Working on his second master's in information technology at DBU. And then me, y'all know I go to Baylor, working on my first master's. Uh, so, yeah, Moses, you go first. You go to Baylor? Go to Oral Roberts University, baby. <laughs> Much respect to Baylor, though. Love Baylor. Um, in fact, our coach, our head coach, is a ex Baylor assistant coach. Actually, we were talking about that, too. Yeah, but anyways. Such an amazing, yeah, anyway, awesome man of God. Um, some of the challenges, geez, as a coach, as an African American man, you know, to be honest, just just honestly speaking here, I, I honestly don't feel like I faced any challenges because I am, I mean, I'm the, probably the most positive guy that you can that you'll ever meet, you know, and. Um, like if something happens to me, I don't, I don't, I don't take offense of it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like I just, I, I, I let it be, and just it runs off, it runs off me like a, a water off a duck's back. Um, but I can say, as a man in my profession, I mean, and just every man, you know, there's challenges of staying pure. You know what I'm saying? Um, especially as a, as a. a a married man, a happily married man with with um, five beautiful children. You know, I'm not. You know, I'm a handsome man. You know, um, and I'm not saying women flock at me, but you know, there's some some ladies out there that I mean, they don't even care if you're married. They're gonna, you know. In fact, on the plane one time, there's a woman, you know, that, that kept, um, you know trying to talk to me and all that kind of stuff. And I mentioned time and time again, yeah, yeah, my wife, oh, I'd love my wife to meet you because she is uh, what you can call, what they call, uh, she was born in Israel. You know how how much in love Sarah and I are, are, are with uh, is, the, Israel and the, the, the different biblical holidays and just everything about it. Right. Um, so I was like, you know what? It would be great for us to, to, uh, to talk, my wife and her. But she kept like, Talking about different things, trying to mm, right. you can tell you can tell when somebody's trying to holler at you. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I would think I would say that's one thing that um, us as, as men kind of in, in in coaching and playing and everything that that's as as a believer you go through that. Right. You know, and it's 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 a challenge to um, to stay pure. You know, because as men, you know, we want to we want to feel flattered. Right. You know, we yeah. want to be able to uh, you know <laughs> know that we're handsome. You know that. But at the same time, as a man of God, you gotta stick stick to your guns, and you gotta continue to be like like pure in your thoughts. And it, like in the Bible, it says um, that uh, just like uh, um, adultery is not only outside the body, right? And like just because you don't sleep with a woman, but even in your thoughts, it's your thoughts. So that's why it's even more important to be pure in your thoughts and. Uh, one of my my guys, Rodney Clark, uh, he played at I think Butler, but he's been playing professional all around. Um, one thing that he mentioned to one of his teammates, that was my teammates, uh, one of my teammates, like bouncing of the eyes, mm -hmm. right? Like wherever you go, there's gonna be women, yeah. you know. So whenever there are women, and as a believer, like, what do you like turn and right. like, look? What? Oh man, what? Heck no, man. As a believer, we're called to be salt and different, and the way people see. Who we um, who we represent is by our fruit, right. right? So if I go, we go around looking at no. So that's why it's important to bounce your eyes, keep yeah. your temple pure and clean. So I like what you said. Like it's that temptation is always going to be there because a lot of I know when people, young people who aren't married, they feel like, oh, I gotta conquer this now. I'm not saying that you shouldn't work at it, but that temptation is always going to come. Yeah. And when Jesus was being tempted by Satan in the wilderness. It said that Satan fled until another time. 
So that yep. temptation is always going to be there. It's just about yep. keeping those balance and highs. Absolutely. So that's real good. Absolutely. What about you? Dude? I would, you know, kind of to follow up on that is, you know, being a single man, um, it's definitely challenging. You know, going back to school, you know, uh, working on the MBA in finance and then now working on a master's in information technology, you have to have a lot of focus. You have to really, you know, catch the concepts as the professors are, you know, um, you know, introducing to the class, the different, because, you know, with technology, it's constantly changing yeah. at all times. And so having to keep up with that and learning all that different information and, you know, kind of, you know, uh, developing myself to be a, you know, professional or, you know, one day an executive within a Fortune 500 company, you know, at times women can be that, uh, be something that kind of, you know, throws you off. Mm -hmm. they, try, they come and try to distract you. You know, you got an assignment that's supposed to be done or you got something to be done within the work environment. It's kind of tough because, you know, um, dealing with that distraction of them, you know, trying to, you know, text you or, you know, I work out a lot. So I'm always in the gym constantly. <laughs> and being in the gym, there's always what? eyes lurking. What? There's always eyes <laughs> lurking. And I like what you just said about the bouncing eyes because there'd be some bouncing buns in there. <laughs> I have to be careful because, you know, for me, <laughs> I, I have to be really careful because for me, it's <laughs> like, Hey, it's been real. Be honest, just being transparent. I'm I'm you know, filthy. because for me, I just have to be very careful because you know I got to protect my temple. Yeah. You know, because you know, you know, a lot of a lot of people talk about these different energies that are out here. Um, but we know them, you know, growing up as them being spirits. You know, so the spiritual warfare. You know, you know, you're sleeping with all these different people. You're getting those spirits, and when you start to deal with all that stuff, that becomes a distraction. Yeah. And so people are like, man, I'm feeling this bad energy. But you don't, but who was that last person you slept with? Yeah. Who was this person that you started to have that lust desire for that you, or, you know, dealing, struggling with porn and all these different type of things. Yeah. You know, all of that stuff is a distraction and, you know, it kind it, it tends to break down your spirit. But I know with certain areas that I struggled in, you know, in my, you know, in my past life, you know, really purifying myself and, you know, having to go through some fasting and prayer, I was able to, you know, Reidentify and you know change the trajectory of my journey. Mm -hmm. You know, there's been challenges as we you know we're talking about right now, but it just helps me. It's it's helped me to like refocus. Sometimes I may take I, I may have those I may take a glimpse, but I tell myself right. refocus. Right. You have to know where you're placing your focus yeah. and where you're trying to go because when you don't know where you're going, it's easily to be distracted. Like right Absolutely. now, we have a destination that we're going to, so we're gonna follow you know the GPS on where we're going to get to our destination but there's other things out here on the road there's other cars that are out here trying to they may cut us off yeah. i can't get distracted i gotta keep bounce my eyes. gotta bounce my eyes keep moving right. <laughs> it's funny you mentioned something about uh focus there's a saying um energy flows where your focus goes yeah. you know what i'm saying if your focus is on man i am trying to stay as pure as i can be um because i want to be honorable to my God and most importantly my God but um, even more importantly my wife and my children right if that's what I want then I need my focus needs to be on the intentionality that needs to happen in order to fulfill what I want to do yeah. you know what I'm saying of the bouncing of the eyes and I kind of want to segue a little bit you know the story of David and Goliath David and go bro I've, Go, 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 go. You the baby, you the baby. Yeah. <laughs> okay, David and Goliath, I just Preach got this. Week. I just got this in my <laughs> <laughs> I got this, like, David and Goliath. David, the story of David, the, he slayed a giant, right? Um, purity, as men, is a giant for all of yeah, us, man, right? Yeah. And in order for David <laughs> to um, slay that giant, he had to be in tune with the spirit, right? But once he, before he killed that, he slayed Goliath, he had to pick up, I think it was five rocks. Yeah. He picked up five rocks, right? And I believe he had to pick up those five rocks, which gave him the capability to and confidence to slay that giant. Mm -hmm. So my question to us now and to everybody, like what are those five, to, to men, even women, women have, they, yeah. they go through, you know what I'm saying? I mean, see uh, a me, purity, I mean, you know, it's I mean, hard. I mean, <laughs> bro. Uh, so uh, what five rocks, and you guys can also comment, like what five rocks does an individual have to pick up in order to slay the giant of purity? I, and I, man, I like that you said that. And I think the biggest thing that, the overarching theme that I'm hearing 
is boundaries, right? He's setting boundaries. Yeah, yeah. And I heard someone say that the wisest man in the Bible, the most wisest man in the Bible, the most godliest man in the Bible, and the strongest man in the Bible all failed a period. We're not more, wow. we're not more wiser yeah. than Solomon. Yeah. We're not stronger than we're not stronger than Samson. Mm -hmm. And we're not more godly than David. Yeah. Man. So if David can <laughs> fall to it, who are we? So we gotta set those boundaries oh, so that we don't fall into it. And I remember when you and your wife Sarah did the um, relationship goals of the church, she was like, the first thing God did was set boundaries. He yeah. put the sun over here, he put the clouds over here, he put the, an expansion between the sky and the ocean. Yeah. So it's like those boundaries are so important. And I'll say for me, the biggest challenge I probably faced, yes, I'm not gonna lie, is purity. But since y'all kind of, you know, took that, for me being at Baylor, I think it's how much my identity is still attached to me being oh, an athlete. Like everywhere I go, in the community, whatever, they say, they ask me, are you an athlete? Are you an yeah. athlete? And I know it's because of my stature. I know it's because I'm African-American, but it's like, man, how come we can't see past my blackness? How come yeah. we can't see past my stature, right? Why can I not be a professor? Why can I not be just going to get my master's in informational technology? Why do I have to be an athlete? And so much of my identity was attached to that. Like, yeah. And I'm not gonna sit here and say that that doesn't stroke my ego when they say I'm an athlete. I yeah, even, yeah, what? To, right, <laughs> even to this day, like I still associate myself as an athlete and kind of get puffed up with it. But I ask myself, like, why? You know, like I'm more than an athlete. One, I'm a child of God. Yeah. But I'm a son. I'm a brother. <coughs> I'm a student. I'm going to get my degree. Um, and it's like, yeah, I, I'm more than just an athlete. Absolutely. I, I get that, and I, I, man, I go through it as well. Even right. I, with the Pacers, like every, every, everywhere I go. They're like, oh, you play for the Pacers? Oh, you, oh, you're a player? What it? I'm like, yo, I'm flattered, but nah, I'm not. I'm a, I'm a coach. Oh, and when, when I was um, coaching at Old Roberts University, um, it was, oh, oh, you're a student here. You're a student athlete here. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm flattered, but nah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I think with that, Josh, um, we can't. It's all about perspective, right? Like they, people see us. Right. Yeah. Right, and they see. I think the the number one thing is like our walking. We are we are all walking billboards, right? And when they see us, they see like number one how we're built, right? Our height, our, our weight, our stature, our our uh, strength, or whatnot. Um, and and I think that's one of the main reasons why they put us in that category, right? Um, and and um, I don't know if I can agree with the just because. You're African American, you know what I'm saying? That they think you're an athlete. I would say, like, even if I was, even if I was Hispanic, and I was big and well, well, I think they I th probably, yeah. It's it's more so like you know when I talk to a lot of, I talk to various people, and when they hear that I have two masters, it's like, oh my goodness, wow, and it's yeah. like, why is that such a shock? Man, you sound so articulate when you talk. Like, what does that mean? So I don't take offense to it. Because of how we were, you know, how we were brought up, how dad kind of told us, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. That you're more, so I just had that mindset, like I'm, I'm a lion, there's nothing that you can do to stop me. Saying these little words, I'm not gonna too much ponder on it because greater the one that's in me than the one that's in the world. Yeah. So for me, I think that I'm, I'm kind of playing devil's advocate, I'm kind of in the middle. Right. Um, it's kind of like, as far as what Moses is saying, I can agree to him, it's like, for what? I think like that. There's a there's a spirit, as I said before. I'm all about that spiritual warfare, you know. Especially when they be Daniel, it's literally like there's spirits out here, so it's gonna be, you know, magnified in the sense of like, oh, they think because I'm black, I ain't smart. Now you put that energy oh, out there, and you're like, that's your perspective, yeah. as you said. Yeah. But then on Joshua's defense, why do you have to say that I'm an athlete? Why is that the first thing that you you know? Why can't I be? A professor you know but then you have to ask yourself this are you walking around on the university with looking like an athlete dressed in you know how are you how are you like Moses said we're billboards how are you dressing you know I remember going to mom used to always ask me like prior like a couple years ago why are you dressing up to go to class like why do you wear like nice pants and nice shirts why do you dress up for me? I said because I, I am a bit, not even say billboard, but I'm presenting myself 
to my professor to my professors and I don't want to present myself as if I'm you know wearing a hoodie like I don't want to come in looking like because they're reading me instantly yeah. well, I don't want to come in but when they see me dressed up nice like oh oh hey how you doing what's your name I oh, like my name that. is Daniel Ihambi I, you know I, I, I that's what I because we all played basketball I don't know about y'all but for me when I was in college I came in with the hoodie and I sat in the back of the class and I was sleeping back there so, but then when I seen when I changed myself and I started to wear button down t-shirts with slacks. Now somebody will say, well, you're changing yourself to fit in for, for their agenda. Well, no, I'm changing myself because I am a professional. Yeah. I know where I want to go. There's a saying, um, uh, what did they say? Like grandpa don't used to dress, yeah. don't dress where you're, don't dress in a way where you're at right now. Don't dress, dress for where you're going. For where you're at right now. Dress like grandpa used to always say, go. so when, we, when I used to wear the mohawk and have that big old <laughs> afro and all, grandpa was like, he said, your appearance, your appearance is everything. R.I.P. Papa Coco. You know, him always saying your appearance, keep your appearance clean cut, keep your beard looking nice. Not because you want to fit in for the world, but because you want to look clean. Absolutely. It's just like when we go to, to the father, Thank God that we could come to him as dirty as possible. Yep. We, we could be dirty, whatever. But it gets to a point where you want to be clean when you come before the Lord. Absolutely. But he's so great and so gracious that he cleans us when we have a filth within ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, no, I I, 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 I definitely, I see where both of y'all are coming from, like appearance and stuff like that. And y'all know I have my my thoughts and things like that like i'm not gonna lie i do like wearing sweats because a lot of what i do lazy <laughs> a lot of what i do you know will be towards athletes and stuff like that i believe um and i guess i guess i am so let me ask you this moses working on the professional level a lot of those guys when they go to games they have to be dressed well yeah. or what happens Perceived as oh no, you get fined. You get actually. fined yeah. because yeah. you're in a professional setting. Yeah. So prepare yourself as you're a professional now. Don't wait. And by you like speaking on uh, that's good, Daniel. Speaking on like like a billboard, your own billboard. Like the way that you're dressing to those kids looking at you, like you're like, whoa, my goodness, King Josh. That did, I want to be like this guy someday. And oh, yeah, he wears sweats and he wears a tall tee. Oh, I don't want to do that. No, but if you come in, like, you have your your, your nice, not nice pants, but you know, yeah. they got pants yeah, nowadays where yeah, it's like, yeah. you know, on a <coughs> nice button down. Yeah. They're like, man, why is he dressing like that? Yeah. And you start to create um, just thoughts within those young kids, which are our um, leaders of the next generation. And it's like you're mending yeah. and you're molding them to being the professional that you are. This is mom. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful, Carl. Show them, show how beautiful our mother is. <laughs> oh, beautiful. mommy. Well, everybody, thank y'all for tuning in. I appreciate y'all, my brothers, for doing this with me. <laughs> y'all have any questions? Y'all have yeah. any prayer requests? Please let me know, and I'll try to get to them. Yeah. Thank y'all, and God bless. Amen.